Hi, I'm Jeff Davis, and this is a BigQuery Concepts video brought to you by ROI Training. Today we're going to talk about how you can control which users and groups have access to which tables and data sets in BigQuery. Let's move over to the demo environment and I'll show you how to set it all up. So I'm logged in with a user that has the BigQuery admin role assigned to it, and I'm working in this data set. This data set is comprised of four tables, and we're going to work primarily with the customer table. If we take a quick look at the customer table, you can see the schema here, which includes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns, including a couple of columns that have data which might be considered personally identifiable information. If we look at the details, we can see that we have 10,001 rows representing our 10,001 customers. If a user has appropriate permissions, they can run queries against this table. I'm gonna run a query to project all of the columns for all of the rows in the customer table. And you can see that indeed I returned 10,001 rows and I've got all seven columns in the results. Okay, so that's great. Now I'm gonna switch over to another user and this user has not been granted permissions to view the data in that data set or that table in particular. So if I, enter in, if I enter in a query that tries to read the rows from that table, I get an error message from the validator telling me that I do not have permissions to read the data, okay? So I need to have an administrator grant me the appropriate permissions. If we switch back to the administrator view, uh, I'm going to do this the way that you've traditionally shared data in BigQuery, and that is to share an entire data set. So I'm going to select the data set, I'm going to choose Share Data Set, and I'm going to enter in the identifier for the user or the group that I want to give access, and I'm going to grant the BigQuery Data Viewer role. So I'm going to add that, and then I'm going to click Done, and if we switch back to the other user, what we should see is that if we re-enter the query, the validator is going to recognize that I now have the appropriate permissions and I can execute my query. So we'll go ahead and run this. And again, this should take just a couple of seconds to run. And when it's done, you can see that we have 10,001 rows and we have all of the columns projected for all of the rows. The problem with this traditional approach of sharing a data set is this not only gives me permissions on the customer table, it also gives me permissions on the orders table. It also gives me per, uh, permissions on the product table. I've basically given, been given permissions at the data set level, which inherits down to all the tables inside. If I'm only supposed to see the data in the customer table, I shouldn't have access to all the others. And so what we want to do is, as an administrator, we want to use the principle of least privilege we don't want to give permissions at the data set level, so I'm going to actually go in here and remove that permission assignment. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to grant the permissions at the table level. Okay, so you notice the button changes to share table. And we do the same thing where we specify the security member and we grant it the appropriate role. Okay, and now if we switch back to the demo user, and we remove the query and we paste it back in, you'll notice the validator seems to think that it's okay. If we run the query, it should return the results. And again, we have all 10,001 rows and we have data for all of the various columns, okay? Now, if I were to try to run these queries against product or order or line items, they wouldn't work because I don't have permissions on those tables. I only have permissions on the customer table. Now, what if I have some users and they should be able to see only customer data, but they shouldn't be able to see all the customer data. So for example, the demo user is a member of an analyst team that works in the Alaska region, and they should only be able to see rows for customers in Alaska, and they should only be able to see columns that have data that isn't considered PII, okay? So how could we set that up? Well, we're gonna go back as the administrator and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove permissions from the table. Uh, I don't want the user to have access to the uh, table anymore. So I'm going to delete that. Okay. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to run a query against the original customer table. 
I'm going to filter out all the rows except the rows that have Alaska as the state, and I'm going to project only five of the seven columns. I'm not going to project the um, email or the phone number column. Okay. I'm going to run this query and I'm going to store the results in a new permanent table. So you'll notice I'm setting a destination table, which is where my results will be written. And this is going to be in a new data set called Alaska Analysts. And I'm going to name this Alaska Customer Table. So we're going to run this. You'll notice right now there's nothing in the Alaska Analysts data set. We're going to run this and it's going to generate a new table. If we look, you can see that the schema has only the first five columns from the source table. If we look at the details, you can see that there's only 180 rows. Okay. And I went ahead and I've already shared the Alaska Analysts data set with this demo at ROI Training user. So if we switch back to that user, what should happen is if I do a refresh of the page, I'm going to do a query here, okay, against the newly generated AK Analysts table. So if I zoom out, you should be able to see it. Hold on for a second. So there's the table, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna query this table. We'll zoom back in. And if we run this, you'll notice I'm projecting all of the rows and all the columns in this newly created table. And you can see it's 180 rows and it has all the data except the email and the phone number. So this is an effective way at limiting the columns and the rows that a particular user can see, but there is obviously a downside in that this derived table is a point in time snapshot of the original customer table. Uh, if five minutes from now we add a bunch of rows that are for Alaska customers, those will show up in the original table, but they won't show up in this derived table. So there's some staleness in your data. Now, what you could do is you could run a scheduled query that automatically replaced this table every hour with a new refreshed view of the data from the source table. But then between you know, hour one and hour two, the data may get out of sync with the original table. So an alternative to doing derived tables is to do views, okay? So if we go back to the administrator view, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the same query, but instead of storing its results in a permanent table, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this as a view, all right? So I'm going to save this in the BQ Demos project in the Alaska Analysts data set, and I'm gonna do um, AK Customer View, and I'm gonna save that. Now, if you remember, when you save a view, it's basically just a saved query, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm saying, look, if somebody wants to query the AK customer view, first what you're gonna do is you're gonna search the source data table for all the rows for Alaska and project only five columns, and then you sort that the results of this query, or you search the results of this query. Now, because I stored this view in this data set, my demo user has access to the view, but because this view accesses this table, it's not going to work because the user can read this view, but they can't execute this query because they don't have access here. So what we need to do is we need to authorize this view to do the query on my behalf. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the data set that houses the original table. I'm gonna click share and there's an authorized view option. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say, look in the Alaska Analysts data set find a view, and I want this view to be able to query the original full tables in my source data set. Now, if I switch back to the demo user, I should be able to, I'm gonna refresh the page again so that I get an updated view of what's in my data set. And I'm going to zoom out. And what we should see here, zoom out, is there's the new view and I wanna query this view, and I'll zoom back in. So what I'm saying is, show me all of the rows from this view, okay? And if I run this, even though I don't have permissions on the original table, I am seeing an up-to-date view of the data that's in the original table. 
Now again, I'm only seeing the five columns and I'm only seeing the 180 rows. So this is uh, two ways to control which rows and which columns people can access. One is to do derived tables, which are stale, or to the second is to do actual views and you authorize the view to query the original table. Now I'll show you one last trick related to securing access to data. And we're gonna go back to the administrator view and let's say we want to be a little more restrictive in terms of who's allowed to see the personally identifiable information, okay? There is a mechanism for BigQuery where you can do column level permissions, all right? And that means you can give people access to all of the rows and all of the columns, but then you can exclude them from certain columns unless you explicitly grant them access to those columns. And the way that you do that is you use a combination of schema, tags, and something called the Google Cloud Data Catalog. So I'm gonna to go to Data Catalog here. And in Data Catalog, there is a section called Policy Tags. Policy tags are what you use to control access to BigQuery columns that have sensitive data. So I'm gonna flip through and you can see once I go to this section of the data catalog, I have something called a taxonomy. This is a collection of tag names. And my demo taxonomy, if we drill down, you can see when I created it and so forth. And you can see that I've got a tag which is sort of you know high sensitivity and a tag which is medium sensitivity. And then within the high sensitivity group of tags, I have a social security number tag. And within the medium group, I've got an address and an email tag. So what I'm going to do is I am going to enforce access control. So I'm going to say if I take a big query table and I select a column and I tag it with email, then nobody will be able to read the data in that column unless they've been explicitly granted permissions to do so. So let's try that out. I'm going to go back here to customer. I'm going to edit the schema and I'm going to select the customer email column and I'm going to add a policy tag, okay? Uh, actually, hold on for a second. I need to switch to a different project, okay? So same idea, I'm gonna to go to BQ Demo Little, I'm gonna to go to customer, I'm going to edit the schema I'm gonna choose the email, I'm gonna add a policy tag, and you can see there's my taxonomy. Here's my uh, tag, which is a category uh, grouping multiple tags, and I'm gonna choose the email tag, okay? So once I've got this in place, what should happen is, if everything works the way that it's supposed to, let's say I wanna do a select star from customer. So this would be, BQ demo little dot customer. Okay. So you'll notice it throws up an error. My user does not have permission to access the policy tag demo email on that column. So even though I'm a BigQuery administrator, even though I apparently have all the permissions necessary to create or delete or modify or query data sets, this policy tag overrides normal permissioning. So in order to grant my current user access to do this sort of query, now I could do a query against the table if I'm not interested in that column. So you'll notice if I do a query that looks at any other column, it works fine. It's only when I try to add the customer email that it doesn't work, okay, which is pretty clever. So let's go back and say I wanna do the select star. Again, I get this error. The way that we would grant access to this user is we are going to go in to email and we're going to click edit. And, oh, actually, no, that's not what we're gonna do. What we're going to do is we are going to show the info panel and we select the tag and we're going to add a member. And in this case, the user is going to be jeff at jwdavis.me and we are going to give this person the data catalog fine-grained reader role. Basically what this means is that this user is going to get permissions to read columns that have this particular tag. 
So I'm going to click Save. Okay. And then when we go back and we run this query, it should work fine. Okay. Now, again, this, this validator error is just sort of left over. If I remove the query and replace it, it shows me that it's valid. Okay. Excellent. So we've looked at controlling permissions at the data set level, at the table level, uh, restricting access to certain rows and columns by using derived tables or authorized views. And then we've also looked at how to use column policy tags with data catalog taxonomies uh, to control whether or not people are allowed to access columns that have sensitive data regardless of what their uh, IAM permissions are. So hopefully you found this useful. If so, go ahead and click on like. Uh, if you're interested in our other videos, check out the ROI Training YouTube channel. And if you'd like to be notified of additional videos when they come out, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much.